Hello, everybody, and welcome to a very special holiday edition of the Klaus and Q Show live on ONTV. I'm Jason Klaus. Alongside me is my my co-host, my tag team partner, my very good, close, personal, longtime friend, Quad L. Edwards. I gave you the Mean Gene Okerlund introduction. You did. Can you pick up on that. <laughs> I love it. Yeah. Happy holidays. Happy holidays, man. I'm glad to be here. This is an exciting time. Uh, we're I mean, we got here so fast, just like our uh, producer was saying, it's like coming off of a roller coaster. We're, we're on it right now. We're getting ready to hit the brake run. Uh, man, I'm excited to be here. You know, The Undertaker's here with the uh, gangster <laughs> rapper John Cena. Uh, you know, <laughs> we're here to have some fun and we're here to talk about, you know, some good topics. We are uh, very much going off the seat of our pants with this, with this episode here. We have no notebooks. We have no formalities per se. Um, the first part of this show, we are going to look back on the year that was, you know, things that were in the headlines, things that happened to us personally. And then we are going to look, you know, to the new year that's very much on the horizon. Then for the second segment, we are going to introduce a new segment that is going to become a regular part of the show moving forward beginning next month and, and the new year of 2024. Uh, but before we get there, and like I got to be careful about this, I don't want to get too animated because, you know, we got the lights and stuff on. Plus, I mean, let's make mention, I guess, that we, we should have done this right out of the gate. Q, they have decked the halls <laughs> for, for us. They have literally rolled out the uh, proverbial red carpet here. And, like, make no mistake about it, I have been in something of a funk, right? I, I've made no bones about it. Like, this year has been kind of challenging in, in, in some regards. I just haven't really been feeling it. And, and Joe, our, our director... And, and producer of this show, man, like he picked up on it and like had a hand in putting all this together. He can't help but feel kind of, I don't know, jovial for, for the lack of a better term. <laughs> oh, absolutely, man. I'm about to start singing songs, man. We're, we're going to have a sing-along in a minute, but, uh, you know, you, you don't want to hear that. Well, listen, that's, <laughs> that's never been done here on the show, right? Listen, we, it's generally in this time of year... Stair singer, pal. Wow. Man, right on the spot. Man, <laughs> I, I, I didn't warm up. <laughs> I love it, man. I love it. Yep. That is cool. <laughs> leave, leave it to Joe to... <laughs> See, this is what I'm talking about. This... I'm going to be straight with you. And that's part of what, what we're doing here on this episode. Like I said, there's no formalities. There's no scripts. There's none of that. I didn't even bring my notebook in here, and everybody knows that that's a staple. The fact of the matter is, is that this is the time of year where there is a lot of reflection. We look back on the previous 12 months, 11 months, and you're like, man, when I started this year, I had this in mind, and this is where we are here and now. And you go back and kind of like, you know, these different snapshots, right? Mm -hmm. Now... There's a lot of people who are going through a lot of different things, and some are good, some are bad, and you know we use the term roller coaster a lot when when we talk about our feelings, when we're talking about the different aspects that we're going through. I mean, when things are good, they're absolutely amazing, and you're at the very at the very peak, the very pinnacle. But when the bottom falls out, man, it, it's it's like a demon drop, man. Yeah. Just real quick and sudden, and it ain't good for anybody. So we look back on this time of year, and I find, you know, in talking with people, and like for seemingly the first time that I've ever experienced these kind of, of emotions, I can understand why there's a degree of heaviness, but this is where, at least for me, I don't know about you, like I will take this time to embrace what's happening and focus on the good that is around us, right? Yeah. Because at the end of the day, there's still a lot of good out there, even though what may be not so awesome is kind of overshadowing that. Right, you know, it's, it's like looking at the glass half full instead of half empty. I mean, we know 
we're always going to have challenges and all kind of issues thrown at us. And I know a lot of us went through a lot of things just this year. And uh, I was just talking about how fast this year went. But even though it went fast, we still had all those issues that we had to deal with. And some of us are still dealing with stuff, uh, you know, going all the way to the end of the year. But, uh, you know, focusing on what's good really helps you get through those challenges because, uh, you know, I know for me, looking back when I had my surgery this this year, it seemed like, man, it seemed like it's been so long now, even though the year went fast. Right. But uh, I had my surgery this year on my hand, uh, fourth metacarpal surgery, a uh, very serious surgery. I was under the knife for a long time, seems like it. But, uh, you know, and it's still healing. You know, right. I, 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 I got a camel hump now. But, uh, <laughs> well, going through that, you know, I had to look at the good coming out of that because I was in so much pain. I was in agony. You know, I could easily like like focus on what's happening right now, the pain and all that stuff. But then I looked at my wife. I said, you know what? I got a few days off from this. I was very, t at that time of the surgery, I was very worn out from work. Right. <laughs> I was very worn out from work and, uh, you know, all the other stuff that I got going on. But, uh, you know, sometimes you got to look at the good and things and it's very hard for people to look at the good for like surgery or something like that but there's good in everything we go through because we have to make a decision to actually focus on what is good which helps shapes us you know our character yeah part of that is too is that along with trying to focus on the good that is happening there come there has to be a degree of patience right oh, because man, there yeah. there are things that we want instant gratification right now. Like I, I just talked about this on the podcast this past week where we, we live in a day and age where if, if you need to know something right now, all you gotta do is pick up your phone and type a couple of things into Google and yeah. boom, there's your answer. Right Could be there. the most, I need a recipe for this. I have this for an ingredient. The next thing you know, they have laid out, I mean, within a millisecond, yeah. a five course meal, All right? right. Yep. Uh, there's a lot of aspects in life that does not happen. And we have to practice some patience. And this will also take into consideration what your level of commitment is on trying to change that mindset. Because some people, like it is easier to, to focus on negative things because that's what's at the forefront yeah instead of putting the effort in 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 looking at something that is the silver lining or the flip side of the coin or what whatever you want to call it i didn't mean for for this to become a, a, a deep philosophical <laughs> thing we're trying to keep it light here right this i week, think we do but, that yeah i don't know but i mean this is what we're <laughs> this is what all of us do at this time of year we look back on on our lives in the last year what worked what didn't and you start kind of formulating your plan for your new year's goal yeah. not we've talked about resolutions before my feelings about it why they don't work so much like you we start setting the new year's goal now when you look back over the the last year all depending on what aspect you're you're looking at it there's a lot of things that was, you know, thrown at us either in pop culture, in sports, mm -hmm. um, a lot of high-profile ce celebrity passings that, you know, some of them were like Pee Wee Herman. Like no yeah. nobody saw, uh, like if you had that on your bingo card that, that Pee Wee Herman was not going to make it out of 2023, uh, I, I have questions, you know what All I'm right. saying? Was was there any particular ce celebrity passing that happened this year? Because we get so invested with celebrities, with athletes. You know, we we really clamor to them. We there's something about them that we attach ourselves to on some level. We I mean, we support them, we root for them. You know, if it's an athlete, if it's an actor, if it's a musician. Like what, whatever they're doing right resonates with us. And like we, so, I mean, there are extreme cases where it does become <laughs> a little bit too much, but mm -hmm. by and large, on, on average, we just, you know, we 
flock to that individual, that team, that musician, what have you. Was there anybody this year that passed away? You're like, man, I did not see that coming, and that one kind of hurts. Well, you said it right there. Pee Wee Herman was my top, <laughs> top right there because I remember seeing it and uh, just seeing his picture, and I was like, man, he looked. He he didn't look like he was ready. Like you know, he looks very young, and uh, you know, and for me, when it comes to like, and I know he was what in his six seventies. Was, was he like, that old? Yeah, yeah. He, was, he was up there. He was yeah. actually up there. But uh, um, when I, I don't know, it just it just kind of like brought me full circle when I see somebody's face and they look young. I'm like, oh, you know what? No matter what you do in life, you don't know when the end is. So that's why we always gotta look at the things half full. You know, um, half you know half look at the glass half full because there's so many so much good in this world you don't know when it's going to end for you, you know, so I, I want to make sure that even though I'm doing the right things, you know, health wise or, you know, whatever, but I got, I got to make sure that I'm taking care of business, you know, really taking care of business and doing what I'm supposed to do because people are leaving at a early age it uh yeah it, it just it just goes to show how fragile life truly is yeah. and how how much of that we take for granted especially if it's if it's something along the lines of rooting for your favorite athlete or you know you go see somebody on the screen you know on the big screen or you're buying their mm -hmm. music downloading th their music what have you you know, you think you look across the board, and like there was a lot of people that, uh, even though, and, and and I think this is the realization that we're getting older because a lot of these people that we grew up watching <laughs> right. are now are now passing okay, away. Yeah, I'll yeah. use Burt Young as as an example, mm -hmm. who played Paulie in the Rocky movies. Anybody who knows me knows what a huge fan of the Rocky franchise I am, and the Pauly character was a very in instrumental part of that. He was I one that Pauly, I was man. like, man, that's a I bummer. Pauly, but yeah. I, there was not a shock value to it. You know what I'm saying? Right, right. There, there's, there's different levels to that. Bray Wyatt shocked me. Bray Wyatt yeah, was one of those that, was... that um, you did not see coming. He was, you know, by all accounts, he was on, on the cusp of another return yep. from what was described as an illness. And the next thing you know, news starts breaking that he has ultimately passed away. And it's like, you have got to be kidding me. How can, dude was in his mid 30s, late 30s, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Athlete, WWE su superstar. The guy had it all, se seemingly. Just goes to show, once again, Man, we don't know what these guys and girls are dealing with right. in real life. Right, right. Out of the ring, off the screen, off set, out of the studio, whatever the case may be. Just you, crazy. You know what? And I actually forgot about it. So it's, it's, it's crazy that, you know, it seems like it still doesn't seem real. You know, that's, that's why it, 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 I kind of forgot about that. But him being 38. 38 and, and 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 passing away like that and while I was waiting for him to return to my television set you right. know uh, and just seeing that the same I, I want to say the same day as Terry Funk yeah the same day as Terry Funk uh, that was it makes you think you know like man wow and and my heart really went out to like his family because my god I said I, I can't imagine like leaving my family behind like that but uh man it's just it's just, it's it's crazy it's it's crazy because i was a big bray wyatt fan mm -hmm. and i remember um uh, we were talking about his return in 2022 right one of the best returns one of the best returns of all times where they had it set up with the white rabbit campaign and everything they were doing but uh and then coming out a year later, he's not here anymore. It's like, man. It wasn't even a year later. He came back in October and he was gone. Well, I guess it was a year, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah, but, but not a full been, year. Yeah. He, he had been off TV since, uh, you know, right after the Royal Rumble. 
You know, we, yeah. we didn't see much of them or, you know, they were going to kind of lead them into WrestleMania, and then, th then that didn't happen. Right, and right. It seemed like they were going with uh, he and Brock Lesnar. Brock wound up wrestling Omos uh -huh. at WrestleMania. Um, the we'll, Bobby Lashley thing. Yeah, we'll, we'll get into more of the wrestling side of this later on in, in the show. But, you know, having a just a regular conversation and, and looking back on the year that was, what is the one or two highlights for, for you that it was like a goal that was checked off? Like this is what you had set as a New Year's goal and it actually came to fruition th this year. I got a good one now. now see, now we can uplift things. Okay, kind of, kind of. I see you, you're turning the tide here. <laughs> I like it. <laughs> uh, but uh, for me, you know, a big goal of mine was to actually start my online training business, and uh, and I've actually done that. And it, it it was a lot of hurdles that I had to cross over just to get that going and uh, get all the content on uh, YouTube and, you know, for advertisement. But uh, actually getting that going. Sometimes getting things going is like the hardest thing to, uh, to do because once you get it going, then you just got to try to maintain it. But actually getting to that part where I got to start here. But sometimes we overthink. And I know for me, for years, I've been overthinking this thing. And I'm like, man, Okay, what do I got to get together? I got to get this, that, and that, and that together, and all this, all this stuff. But once you get it together, you start thinking about all this other stuff that you want to get together. That you probably just need to, just get the ball rolling, you know. So for me, I actually got it rolling. Um, J330 Fitness. Um, I got it going, man, and I'm excited about it. And and now I can set new goals, and actually attach that to it. And I love it. And uh, you know what? It's one of the best decisions I made, man. What's uh, what's behind the name? It's actually a Bible scripture. <laughs> okay. It's a it's a Bible scripture. Uh, it's John chapter three verse thirty, and it says, "He must increase, we must decrease." You know, a lot of people trying to lose weight. And I said, "That's a kind of clever way to put that because." A lot of people trying to lose weight. We must decrease our fat mass. So that's what that's what I'm focusing on for a lot of people. But I'm also trying to um, kind of venture into habit coaching and trying to help people with their daily habits. And it's a lot that goes into it. Just come and visit me on my uh, YouTube channel, J330 Fitness on YouTube. There's a lot of explanations on there for you. Uh, anybody that wants to venture into weight loss and, uh, and habit coaching and, and, you know, things of that nature. Nutrition as well. You know what's cool about that? Like, I've watched your TikTok videos and, like, I've, I've been following that aspect of you. What, what dawns on me is the first, you came on the 100th episode of the podcast. I did. And we kind of touched on it a little bit back then. And then you came on what was the Klaus to the Heart live show on here, which, which preceded this show. And you talked about it then. And it was very much in the preliminary planning stages. <laughs> right, yeah. Now to see that, and like I said, you know, I follow you on TikTok, and when your videos come across, your logo pops up. And I'm a logo guy, you know, I am very <laughs> much a brand guy. I pay attention to the nuances. I pay attention to presentation. I pay attention to all of that stuff that a lot of people will just, I mean, they'll see it, but they won't look at it. You know what I mean? There is a difference. Like I just saw that bottle of water that's sitting in front of me, but I couldn't tell you exactly what specific brand of water that is. See, I saw it, but I didn't look at it. If I looked at it, and I just know this, I could tell you that it's Kroger brand. <laughs> but be that as it may, um, what you're doing is number one, everything that epitomizes what the PFC Entertainment Network is all about. 
And dare I say, and I don't want to speak for anybody, and if the, you know this needs to be cut out in post, I understand, but I feel like drive, the determination, uh, the hard work, uh, you know, all of that that goes into exploring a creative realm, mm -hmm. which is ultimately an, ex an, an extension of who and what you are, uh, I believe would be safe to say that that's part of the foundation of why there is an Orion neighborhood television. So yep. everything kind of yep. coincides yep. with one another, right? So to see you do that, I, I have had such tremendous feelings of pride for you. I'm so proud of you. And, I, and you continue to amaze me, you know, just with the different videos that you put out there, the presentation, the production. And you are, without a shadow of a doubt, a glaring example of what can happen when you set your mind to, to something and you actually execute it. Absolutely. That's why I say, and I thank you for that, uh, never give up. Never give up, no matter how long it takes. And uh, this wasn't something that just came up on me this year. This was like years and years. And, uh, you know, I had to get myself together first, and therefore I can dis distribute it out, you know, to the masses. I mean, I, 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 it, it, it's a journey. And, and, and for those who have those visions and those dreams, man, you got to go after it. Because once you get that ball rolling, it's it's like a snow it's like a snowball going down the hill. You know, it just continues to build and build and build, and you're gonna get excited, and you're gonna have people that's gonna follow you, and uh, really be excited with you. The ones that are not, then you know, just whatever. But you are gonna have those people that's gonna be excited with you, and. My, some of my biggest followings, other than uh, my, my good friend Jason Klaus here, are people that I don't even know. <laughs> you know, and, and it, it's something because we always expect, and I, you know, sometimes I go off on a little tangent, <laughs> but we always expect <laughs> some of the closest people, you know, family, loved ones to be our number one supporters, but sometimes it's that person that you don't know that's, that needs you. That one person that needs you, that's been looking, oh, you know what? That's exactly what I've been looking for right there. Those are the people that you got to reach. And that's why we're, we're in this social media age and there's so much garbage on there. You might as well put something good on there. Why not? Why not? That's what Jason is doing. That's what I'm doing. That's what the, the PFC Network, that's what we are all about. Orion ON TV, we are all about that. Uh, I I really could not have said that part any, any better. And like I said, man, like I knowing you and being your and being able to say, yeah, he's my friend. This guy is my friend. Like that's a privilege. That that's something that I don't take lightly. You know, like what do you do? Well, what part? <laughs> <You know? laughs> uh, one of the coolest things I do is I get to co-host. A, a show like this with somebody that I have the utmost respect and admiration for. As I look back on my year, Q, I feel like <laughs> if you would have asked me this um, three, four weeks ago, I would have a different answer for yeah. you. But as I look back on what this year was, can I pick out a highlight? Yeah, I can pick out a few of them. But as, as I th was thinking about it on the way here today, um, I stopped by my aunt's house who lives here in, in Lake Orion, uh, my mom's only sister. And uh, I have maintained that, you know, my, my mom, you know, passed away a handful of years ago, but my aunt is, is as close to my mom as uh, that there's ever going to be. Sounds like her, looks like her, what, you know, like their mannerisms, <laughs> like everything is, is the same. So I went and, and visited my aunt for a little bit today before I, I came in here. And at 73 years old, she achieved a fourth, a, a fourth degree black belt in, in Taekwondo. Wow. And... 
if that's not enough to inspire somebody, you know, if you have even just an inkling of, of interest in doing something, but you think, oh, I can't for one reason or the other. Now, I, we should bring her on, on the show here yeah. and have her explain her journey because there was a number of obstacles that she had to overcome to find somebody that, that would train her for this amazing honor. You know, she had two big strikes against her in that in that world, in that realm. Number one, wow. she was a woman. Number two, she was going to be 73 years old by the time the testing rolled around. But somebody took a chance on her. Somebody b believed her, believed in her, and she was able to achieve that just, you know, a little bit ago, a couple months ago. Um, and just it's it's things like that man like that is a glaring example of what can be you know it's all you get back what you put in you know and she is a prime example of that that is a highlight that for me good highlight. um we were we were able to expand the pfc network you know we were able yeah. to 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 maintain our our amazing relationship here on on tv uh, we were able to add new podcasts to the lineup. I got to know new people, new co-hosts, and like we're not done yet. Not done yet. And there's a lot of things that are in the works. There's things on the tables. There's things on my mind because, make no mistake about it, this year, like it is for a lot of people, was nothing short of a roller coaster. And it would be like we said earlier, it'd be real easy to harp on everything or the focus on everything that didn't go right. I absolutely refuse to spend another significant chunk of my life being anxious or miserable or undriven, un anything like that. I, I'm done with that. I, my sister-in-law said it best the other day. The book that I had been writing in terms of my journey is over. That book is now closed. So a new one has to start being written. So we're, we're opening up the cover and we're starting on page one. Because here's, I came to a realization last night, Q. I, I got to work here. I told you this was going to be a very informal episode here. Um, <laughs> I got, I got to work last night, and I'm always, I'm generally early. I, like, I'm one of those people that if I am right on time, I am late. I hate being late for, for oh, anything. Yeah. So I make sure it's almost like, I, I don't know, there might be some sort of weird wiring in me, but I got to get to where I'm going, so I'm there early. There's no question about it. I'm, I'm there. And I generally will sit in the parking lot and get into what I call game mode, you know, <laughs> trying trying to get ready, mentally prepare for because you you know yes, you sir. you yes, you sir. walk into that building and it's a completely different environment or a yeah. mindset. No joke. Uh, people think I say that tongue in cheek. That is not the case. <laughs> <laughs> I guarantee it's a completely different environment. Uh, so you got to prepare for that, right? Yeah. I was sitting in there and I I was thinking about different things that I wanted to incorporate into the show here tonight. Things that I wanted to touch on, like obviously I, I wanted to to acknowledge the amazing feat that my aunt pulled off, which is extraordinary unto itself, but I was doing a, a review of sorts in my brain over the last 12 months of my life. The highs, the lows, the good, the bad, the ugly, everything in between. And there's a lot of all of it. And I sat there for a little bit and like something happened, bro. Like internally, we all have beasts within us that represent different aspects of our fundamental being. Some of them are awake, they are alert, they are on full display. They're on full display because that's how we present ourselves to you, to the public, to the world. You may get variations of it in a more intimate and personal setting versus a public one. Or there's other ones that we deal with internally. 
that only we get to dictate how that's represented, how that's presented, how that is brought out. Some people wear that on their sleeves, other ones do not. There's something within all of us that represents that inner fire that burns, that, that makes us who we are, that drives us. It is the blood that runs through our veins. It is what makes our heart pump and is what keeps our eyes on the prize. Self-admittedly, my beast was dormant. It was sleeping. It was hibernating. Because other beasts were trying to cater to everybody else's needs, wants, and desires. I made that decision to allow that to happen. And while that happened, the one that actually drives me was asleep. And they always say, Q, be careful about poking and prodding the bear yep. as it's hibernating. Because once it wakes up, there is nothing short of reckless abandon in its wake. That's what happens. So last night, I can pinpoint it to the exact time of day. It happened at 10.07 p.m. last night. The beast within me woke up. And when it woke up, it was almost like an out-of-body experience. Like I could see everything within me change on a dime. My focus, my drive, everything changed. And everything became crystal clear of what I'm supposed to do where I'm supposed to be. And there's going to be people that are going to be with me on this ride, and there's other ones that are getting thrown the hell off. Because quite frankly, and egotistically perhaps, they don't deserve to be part of the ride. You, all the people with the, within the PFC network, Joe Johnson, all, anybody that has anything to to do with the affiliation of our presentation. We're, we're going for a ride. And you can either hop on board with us or move out of the way. If you choose to stay in the path, I promise you what, what's going to happen is, is you're going to get run over without a second thought, without a glance back, and without a damn to be given. I promise you that. Anything you want to say before we go to break? Watch out now. <laughs> <laughs> With that, we're going to run a quick timeout. More of the Klaus and Q show <laughs> is right after this. Nine, eight, eight. Are you or someone you know having thoughts of suicide or experiencing a mental health or substance abuse crisis? 988 connects you to compassionate, confidential support for free. 988. 988 is the new three-digit dialing code for the Suicide and Crisis Lifeline. For years, the Lifeline, formerly known as the National Suicide Prevention Lifeline, has answered tens of millions of calls and helped people overcome mental health-related distress. 988 is the same trusted resource. When you call, text, or chat 988, you'll be quickly connected to trained crisis counselors who will listen to your concerns, provide support, and get you additional help if needed. There is hope. The Lifeline works. You are not alone in crisis. Just call, text, or chat 988. 988! Knowing how to identify signs of crisis in others and help connect them to resources like the 988 Suicide and Crisis Lifeline is an important way to prevent suicide and life warning. For information about free suicide prevention trainings offered in our community, please visit the North Oakland Community Coalition at NOCCMI.org. And we welcome... <laughs> <laughs> we welcome you back to the Klaus and Q show here live. Li you can't, can't go wrong, can't if, go if, wrong. If, if you're on live television. 
Along with Quadell Edwards, I'm Jason Klaus. We certainly appreciate you tuning in here. And yeah, we are live here on ON TV, live. as you can tell. Um, and I gotta be careful here because I found myself getting a little bit worked up here in the in the last uh, segment before we took that very important break. There's a lot of electricity running around un under here, Cube, oh, between yeah. the lights on the sweatshirt and the microphone going up. If I start sweating, <laughs> th 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 things could go uh, awry very, very quickly. Listen, we've alluded to it last <coughs> month, and I guess the month b before that, that there was going to be a slight change in format on our uh, fourth I mean episodes of the Klaus and Q show because there is a contingent of you who you, you've asked for it we're going to give it to you um, so the second segment of the show is going to be dedicated to to professional wrestling and kind of our takes on it and it kind of coincides with you know our show next month is going to be an exclusive preview of the Royal Rumble uh, the preview shows and the re and the review shows uh, were very well received the, this past year that we did. And of course, we will be bringing back Sean Grugel, who is co-host with me on Power Tripping Through the 80s podcast on Wednesdays, and the Stan Lee of our network, um, <laughs> Brian Balf, uh, will, will be joining us for the Royal Rumble preview. So beginning here tonight, and moving forward with each additional episode, we will be introducing the segment called The Three Count. And what that is going to be is there will be three different topics that Q and I will give our opinions, our insight, our outlook on, and uh, we will. that's how we'll wrap up every episode. Now, obviously, if you are a professional wrestling fan, you are one of the millions and millions of people around the world that are talking about one guy and his was it such a shocking return to WWE uh, CM Punk came back at the end of the Survivor Series the very end of the Survivor Series mm -hmm. we talked about this before we came on the air here you know the way it was all all presented you know the show was going off the air yeah. you, and, uh, you know how many thousands of people we're leaving the arena or you know what turning the tv off like i was getting ready to do head out when all of a sudden you heard that <laughs> and the music hit and the logo flash and they legitimately blew the roof off the all-state arena in chicago was this the right time to bring him back now i ask you this <laughs> because it wasn't all that long ago my friend you sat in that chair on this set and you said it's not happening hi guys <laughs> all right <laughs> it you know what they got me they got me uh you know but even getting closer to the uh event when the talks kind of like died down or the rumors kind of like died down a little bit um i was really thinking that it's not going to happen but uh if it did happen, I would be, I would be perfectly okay with it because I, I like CM Punk. Um, you know, they so they got me. You know, because I was actually uh, in the motion of turning off the, the 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 Peacock Network. I was getting ready to turn it off. I was getting ready to turn it off and you know just go to bed because it was in it was it was late. But when that uh that uh guitar riff came. And man, and the logo, it was the logo that popped up. And when he walked out, that's when it really got kind of surreal. And uh, I'm like, you know what? This is happening. <laughs> so I'm like, at, at that point, I'm thinking like, okay, man. I started feeling bad for like Randy and I started feeling bad for the people that might not have wanted him there. But as a fan, looking on the outside, man, I was completely fine with it. And uh for those who's gonna, for those who, who who are gonna call me out, you know, say, yeah. well, you said <laughs> <laughs> there's no way that can that's gonna happen. They're not gonna accept them. Well, they did, and I'm happy they did. I'm glad he's back. What a what a difference Triple H has made in so much Huge. of this. This this would not have happened 
if Triple H was not the one kind of calling the shots on the WWE side of this merger with UFC. Yeah. There was a lot of a lot of question marks when this merger went down and that was another one of those headline highlights for me personally. Like I can't believe that WWE is no longer owned exclusively by somebody named McMahon. Right. It just didn't seem feasible. What's this going to do to the company? Triple H is, in every sense of the word, the game. From what had to happen in the ring mm -hmm. and how it gets all, what, everything that happens behind the scenes. Yeah. This... This thing with CM Punk would not have happened without Triple H. Agreed. There, there is no doubt about that. There's there a lot of question marks around CM Punk right now. Yes, there is. Can he coexist with a more structured locker room and management, uh, you know, organization than what he just left with all elite wrestling? The time, time will tell. Because CM Punk very much moves to the beat of his own drummer. Yeah. Good, whether you like him or not, you have to respect the guy that he has enough self-worth and self-confidence that he will call his own shots and be damned the, the, the consequences. But I also feel like at this stage in his career, he understands the opportunity that he has here. Yeah. This is his last major run to make a significant impact on a worldwide platform because I hate to be the one to tell a pretty passionate contingent of wrestling fans it was never going to happen in AEW. He was going to get to so far and then that was going to be it. Now the, with the new restructuring of world wrestling entertainment and a whole new approach on just about every aspect of how this business is going to be run what CM Punk achieved in his last run could be eclipsed. Oh, absolutely. Double-wise, right? Yeah, yeah. AEW needs CM Punk more than CM Punk needs AEW, but WWE don't need CM Punk. CM Punk needs WWE, so it's flip-flopped here. I mean, but with this move, just this move alone can be one of the biggest money-making moves. If you think about the ratings, the ratings are already pretty much increased. You got the merch sales Off are the there. Yeah. But then when you think about coming into 2024, we have a, some big TV rights deals coming up. And uh, I don't think Monday Night Raw has been picked up it yet. It has not. So you're talking about CM Punk being on Monday Night Raw may draw interest from you know, one of those big money givers, you know, whoever wants to throw some money in the pot for uh, Monday Night Raw, they might pull the trigger now because they got somebody in the caliber of CM Punk on that roster. You're talking about a needle mover. And he, he CM Punk brought it up that he is a needle mover. And that's, that's a big, that's a fact. All right, I was going to use the two count for the Randy Orton return, but <laughs> you made a transition, and, and it's a more timely thing. Uh, the, this TV rights for Monday Night Raw is a big deal for, for WWE from a business standpoint, but for fans too, because yeah. professional wrestling fans are among the most passionate and loyal fan bases of any sport and or entertainment entity, bar none. You cannot argue it. Like, it, for the longest time, they, they would say that about NASCAR fans. That NAS, you know, once NASCAR fans latched onto a driver, that, that would it, be the, the end of it, right? Like, yeah. that, that was their guy. Professional wrestling is, it's not just one particular person more often than not, it's the entire industry. And Monday Night Raw has been a staple for generations at this point, mm, Q. Yeah. Over 30 years of Monday Night Raw has, has, has gone down here. And it is insane to think about a professional wrestling program has been on, it is without a shadow of a doubt, the longest running episodic show in television history the flagship show of the biggest wrestling company in the entire world hangs in the balance. 
SmackDown, we have learned, is going to the USA Network after not being picked up again by Fox. NXT is going to the CW, which is its own ironic move. Yeah. The sidebar to that is the NWA was in talks with bringing their product to the CW. They did a very controversial vignette yeah. with very adult-oriented content mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> that probably was a, was a contributor to the CW pulling away, and then yeah. all of a sudden they see that NXT is involved. Right around the time they did that big show where they had seen uh, Undertaker, Becky Lynch had all made these big surprise or, or forecasted appearances on the developmental brand. Right. Next thing you know, they, they're getting a brand new deal with, with the CW. That is pretty lucrative for a CW deal, I don't mind telling you. But Monday Night Raw is still hanging in the balance. And the thing that I read as recently as Wednesday, this past Wednesday, is Time Warner Discovery, yeah. which not, which currently owns or has a huge hand in the broadcasting of AEW content, may not be looking forward to extending their deal with AEW and has been mentioned as a possible suitor for Monday Night Raw. How big of a deal would it be if WWE, their flagship show, wound up on a Turner Network broadcast? <laughs> it's like looking into the Twilight Zone. Hell freezes <laughs> over, right? Yeah. I mean, CM Punk wore the shirt, perfect timing. I mean, wow. Um, I can't see. I, I, it's, it's almost like you have to see it to believe it, you know, because, you know, we... we Turner Sports Network, that, that still, to me, is a WCW, uh, that, 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 that's their, that's a WCW thing. And right. I don't even associate AEW there right now because it, it seemed like it was such a staple for WCW. And every time I see, you know, TBS, TNT, I'm thinking, I'm thinking WCW. You know, we grew up wrestling fans of some of the newer guys, probably newer fans, probably see uh, the AEW aspect to it. But uh, but the fact that you I, you you cannot honestly see where they're coming from. I mean, if they want wrestling, why not go after the biggest? Right. Why not you know go after the best? You know, and I'm not. And I don't want to get attacked by the AEW market because AEW fans, WWE loyal fans, these fans are crazy. <laughs> <laughs> so I don't want to get attacked by one or the other. I'm a wrestling fan. You know, I'm, I'm a wrestling fan. There, there's parts of AEW that I do like. I'm not a big AEW follower. But uh, if this happens... What a slap in the face. What For a sure. slap in the face to Tony Khan. Yeah. The, who is also a wrestling fan. That's... <laughs> okay. I That could be its whole other thing <laughs> that maybe we'll say for the podcast where I can talk a little bit more freely without worrying about what actually comes <laughs> up in terms of content. Um it's going to be real interesting to see how that plays out. And even if Ross stays on Monday nights, which is also a thing that could be upended too. So very, very interesting. Now, um, for the three count, who is your MVP in, in wrestling for 2023? All right. For me, I have to go with Gunther. Reason... Reason being that I'm picking Gunther is uh, the caliber of matches that he's had over the past year. Um, every, to me, every match has been a slam dunk except for one. You know, uh, the match with Riddle was a little bit more to be desired than that one. But uh, overall, his presentation, um, you know, the way they, they, they booked him. And he, he is a guy that actually, to me, made that intercontinental title feel much bigger, almost to the scale of the world title. 
Uh, whoever defeats Gunther, that he strap a rocket to that person. I mean, can you imagine a person that actually dethrones Gunther after having such a, a long reign? I mean, he broke the record this year, yep. um, beating the honky tonk man. Uh, and, Which broke my heart. I don't mind. You know, I, I got my own thoughts on the honky tonk man, but we'll <laughs> save that for another show. Uh, but you know, <laughs> Gunther. <laughs> I hit the button, guys. <laughs> like, what is happening? Yeah, you can't see me. But, uh, <laughs> no, but I can sure as hell hear you. You can hear me. <laughs> That's probably all in the mic, too. But uh, it'll shut off in a second. But... <laughs> <laughs> I can't take you serious right now. Okay, go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> to me, overall... <laughs> <laughs> Talk about outtakes. Oh man, <laughs> live on the air. It can't go wrong. Overall, wrong <laughs> the presentation of Gunther and the quality of matches, and even his promos. I mean, and everything has been a, a slam dunk to me. You know, this has been a great year for Gunther. And even when we thought that at WrestleMania we thought Sheamus was getting the belt, we thought Sheamus was getting it. And Gunther continued his reign. We thought McIntyre was going to get it. He, he continued his reign, and he, he, made, he made The Miz look good. Yeah. <laughs> Come on. Yeah, he sure did. He made The Miz look The Miz does not look good unless Gunther is standing across from him. All right, real quick, who's going to be the guy that ends his reign as the Intercontinental Champion? And why is it Chad Gable? <laughs> <laughs> I, I do pick Chad Gable. Uh, Thank you! <laughs> you're talking about underrated, man. That guy has been underrated for years, and I'm glad that Triple H is now sitting in that seat <laughs> that he's sitting in because if he wasn't, then we'll still have a Shorty G walking around. Oh, or geez. probably somebody that's released by now. He probably would have been released yeah. if, if uh, you know, Triple H wasn't sitting in that seat. But, you know, Chad Gable would be the perfect, perfect guy to... On paper, you're like, no, there's no way. You know? But, like, the dude is a legit athlete. Yeah. He, it, he, okay, he's short and everything, but he's he's a little B.A. He is. he got a little bit of Kurt Angle in him, you know. Uh, it, and to me, it doesn't even have to be at WrestleMania because I, 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 I kind of feel like maybe they're teasing. People are talking about maybe Brock fighting uh, Gunther, which was a match that we wanted to see last year. Right. Uh, so... You know, I don't want to see Brock take the belt, you know. But, uh, you know, I, and that match doesn't even need an Intercontinental title. But, uh, you know, Chad Gable would be perfect. I agree. For me, the MVP, and I, I went back and forth, strong argument for for Gunther. I'm a big fan, throwback and all that. Uh, you know, you look at the both rosters for SmackDown and Monday Night Raw, like, I should, on the surface, be like, it's Roman Reigns, but it's not. Not this year. Roman has been MVP the last couple of years, but not this year. And it's it's because, for nothing else, his, his reduced in-ring schedule, his reduced TV appearances, they yeah. have turned him into what he truly is, and that is an attraction, a special attraction. He's been the long, you know, he's the universal champion, has been for over three years now, knocking on the door of Hulk Hogan's reign in terms of longevity. You can make a strong argument for Roman Reigns on a number of different levels. MVP is not one of them, for me anyway. It's Seth Rollins. And, and the reason why is Monday Night Raw decided that they were going to have their own world champion. You couldn't pick a better guy to anoint as the inaugural world heavyweight champion on pre on paper in presentation in the ring out of the ring the promos the crowd loves him he's over they mm -hmm. sing his music you need a strong representative for a world champion if you are going to have a world champion for both televised brands raw and smackdown obviously with roman be exclusive to smackdown raw needed something and it's been Seth Rollins. And even with legitimate back issues, 
the guy is still putting out some of his best work that he's ever done. He could be in in tremendous pain. He yeah. comes in week in, week out. The series of matches he had with, with, with Shinsuke Nakamura at a few of these uh, last pay-per-views were off the charts. Brutal, brutal. Nakamura is another one of those guys, underutilized, underappreciated. Yeah. The dude is a buzzsaw. Uh, but Rollins was very much in, in the mix with that. Didn't let the back injury thing slow him down because he realizes his role and his responsibility. And in, in real life, as well as his professional one, you can tell that this is a guy who takes that very, very, very ser seriously. Yeah. You saw that last week on his with his promo with CM Punk. Yep. A lot of real life heat between these two guys and they're able to put a lot of that on the side burner and focus on business. Because at yep. the end of the day, it's all about the cash, right? Cash and creative. And these guys are on a collision course that's probably going to culminate at, at WrestleMania, I would imagine. Yeah. Now, as Who we- Who dethrones Seth Rollins? It'll be Punk. Yeah? Yeah. Oh, you're going for it. All yeah. right. Early prediction for, for for WrestleMania. We we got two more prediction shows before that. Wow, we got early right, one. Right now, on the way they're they're setting it up, I, I really believe that it is going to be Rollins versus Punk at WrestleMania, night one. It will okay. be the main event. I feel like Punk finally gets his main event spot at WrestleMania. I can't believe after 10 years... Uh, being away, and he finally gets the one thing that he has k pissed and moaned about not mm -hmm. getting, that they wouldn't have him go yeah. over. Uh, but, like, they had Triple H go over Sting. So, I mean, <laughs> anything's possible. Right. Uh, but, yeah, I, it's my prediction that CM Punk is the one that, that takes the title from him. Now, as we put a bow on this episode, I would like to take a couple of moments here and say thank you to those of you who tune in each and every month that we do this, the ones that watch the replays on YouTube, and just as important, the people that make this possible. Joe Johnson, Ian Locke, and, and the amazing people here at ONTV who opened the doors for us. Joe was on vacation this week and came in here t today for us so that we, we could do this. So my Amen. level of appreciation and gratitude, not just as our producer and our director and, and the guy that pushes the buttons for me on this show, but more importantly, my personal friendship with him is one of the true privileges in, in my life. And I get to do this with you. And you are nothing short of, of a privilege each and every time we do this or Anytime I have any kind of correspondence with you, it's 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 yeah, one of it's time. one of the yeah. good things I have in my life. I have a, some amazing friends within my inner circle, it's a great family. My kids are awesome. Like, there's a lot of good going on. Now we just have to kind of uh, cut away some of the things that are dragging me back or trying to drag me down, and we will work on that. But make absolute no mistake about it none of this is possible without you and i just wanted to take this opportunity to say thank you i wish you all a very merry christmas uh, happy holidays happy new year and uh, we're looking forward to getting bigger and better uh, going into this new year anything you you'd like to say absolutely uh, merry christmas thank you all uh, for just supporting us this whole year. You know, this has been an awesome ride. Uh, we're going to keep on riding, and we're going to go faster and faster and get bigger and bigger. And uh, we thank you right now for all the, uh, our, 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 our audience and our plat the platform that we have here. And I wish you all a Merry Christmas, Happy Holidays, Happy Kwanzaa, whatever the case may be. Um, enjoy. Enjoy the moment and live in it. And I'm going to leave this cliffhanger. CM Punk loses at WrestleMania. Zoom in, zoom in. How dare you? <laughs> this is how you. This is how you're gonna end the Ooh year. Wee. You're gonna. You're Pipe gonna, bomb. You're gonna ruffle my feathers, <laughs> and this is how we're gonna end the year.
All right, well, stay tuned, and we'll see how this picks up next month when we come back here with Brian Boff, Sean Grugel, as part of our Royal Rumble, where CM Punk is oh, winning yeah. episode yeah. to set up for <laughs> WrestleMania, WrestleMania, where Punk is winning the title. Ah. Maybe we'll get the ring in here and we'll we have our own have Royal to. Rumble. With we might that, have to. Be awesome to yourselves and to each other. <laughs> we'll see you next year here on the Klaus and Q Show exclusively on Orion Neighborhood Television. Happy holidays.